Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. I hope that you're doing well. Today I wanna to talk to you guys about fragrances that you can wear pretty much anywhere, anytime, any place, any season. Supreme versatility. Because believe it or not, this is, this is really hard to wrap your head around, but not everybody has a crazy, stupid, huge collection. I know, it's crazy. You would think everyone has at least like 150 fragrances, right? So these are those type of scents that can be your jack of all trades, your Swiss army knife. You can wear these about anywhere. People are gonna love them. And yeah, that does mean there's a lot of blue fragrances in here. And yeah, that does mean a lot of these are big time sellers. So let's jump into it. Let's check these out. I have decided that we're gonna run the blue fragrance gamut right at the beginning of the video, just knock them out. So we're starting off with Dylan Blue from Versace. Now of the big time, big name blue fragrances, this one's gonna be the most affordable one, assuming that you're buying from discounters. So that's gonna be Fragrance Net, Fragrance Buy, Fragrance X, stores like that. Because the next ones that we're gonna talk about blue fragrance wise, they don't really ever get discounted that heavily, if at all. Sometimes they're actually more expensive at discounters, sometimes, than at full retail. Yeah, not such a discount when that happens, is it? And while this isn't crazy cheap at discounters, at least it's actually discounted, so there's that. Dylan Blue I actually like a lot. When you first spray it on, you get this nice, clean, aquatic bergamot mixture. It smells really good, really appealing. Then it has a bit of incense that comes in as the fragrance dries down. So that gives it this really slight tinge of smokiness, which helps it shine in cooler weather. It gives it a little more depth, makes it a little bit more interesting. You've got Ambroxan in here, but not overloaded as much as one of the fragrances that we'll talk about really soon. This one plays second fiddle a little bit to some of the bigger name blue fragrances out there, but it's a great package for what you pay here. The compliment factor is there, the versatility is there, and it's not from a no-name brand. So if you're worried about that for any reason, I mean, I don't care, but I know some people do, you don't have that issue here. Because when you say, oh, I'm wearing Versace to your everyday person, they'll be like, oh, Versace, hmm, I know that. All right, let's move on now to Bleu de Chanel from Chanel. This is the Eau de Toilette. Realistically, you could also go with the Eau de Parfum or the Parfum if you wanted. Like Dylan Blue, this one has a nice citrus opening, more grapefruit here, and it also has incense. The incense is a little bit more pronounced in Bleu de Chanel than Versace Dylan Blue. You also have ginger, vetiver, and mint as some of the notes in the fragrance. And I gotta say, that combination of ginger and grapefruit in Bleu de Chanel in the opening is awesome. It smells so nice to me. This one will be a little bit classier than Dylan Blue, I would say. Uh, Dylan Blue maybe leans a little more youthful than Bleu de Chanel. And the quality is going to come across a little bit more in Bleu de Chanel as well. So Bleu de Chanel is one of the big, big, big dogs in blue fragrances. This one is the other, if you're talking just the top two. It is Dior Sauvage, and once again, this is the Eau de Toilette. So this is the fragrance, obviously, that has that Ambroxan overload, even more so than Versace Dylan Blue. This one has a metallic opening. It's got a good amount of pepper, both black pepper and Sichuan pepper. Got bergamot in there, giving you that fresh citrus blast in the top. Then you've got a nice clean lavender that comes out through the mid, very masculine. This fragrance has awesome performance. It lasts forever, projects heavily. Dior Sauvage, one of the absolute most popular fragrances on the market today. So again, it's not gonna have you smelling, you know, drastically different from what other people are wearing, but if you want a scent that is going to last and project and grab attention everywhere you go, that's the one you want. And now kind of rounding out that, that upper level of blue fragrances, why Eau de Parfum? You could also go with the Eau de Toilette. People like that one a lot as well, but that's more spring summer scent. And for me, it's more like a daytime, casual or office fragrance, whereas Y Eau de Parfum is a little more versatile. This one has bergamot in the opening, so it does have that citrus, but it has more of a focus on apple here. So that's gonna help differentiate it from some of these other ones. You've also got ginger in here in the opening, once again, helping liven things up, gives it that zing, that freshness off the top. And then you've got sage, amberwood, and tonka as the fragrance dries down. So a little aromatic hit, and then some sweet woodiness in the base. I love Y Eau de Parfum, and I think it's a great change of pace from Bleu de Chanel, Sauvage, or Dylan Blue. All right, let's switch things up a little bit. Next, we're going with Le Beau. This is from Jean-Paul Gaultier. They did just come out with a new flanker of this, Le Beau Le Parfum. Uh, but I gotta say, between the two, 
I think most people are gonna like this one more, the original. So this one is quite different as far as the note breakdown goes, mainly just because this has coconut in it and also it only has three notes. I don't really like that. I don't like fragrance brands only giving three notes, one in the top, one in the mid, one in the base, but that's what they've done here. That doesn't mean that there are less ingredients or anything in here. It just means they've simplified the note breakdown for marketing purposes, typically. So anyway, you're gonna get this freshness off the top. Bergamot, once again, people love that note. You see it used everywhere. And then the coconut is gonna give you this little bit of a tropical sweetness. And I, I like the way that it's done actually. It had to grow on me at first, I wasn't a huge fan, but given more wear, I've actually really grown to appreciate Lebeau. And I like that the coconut here doesn't come across too, you know, powdery or sunscreeny. Uh, there's a lot of ways that it can come across that make the fragrance smell very feminine. There are a lot of fragrances that I have and fragrances that I smell that make use of coconut. And most of the time, I don't really like the way it smells, but here it's actually really nice. Some people would think of that more as like spring, summertime, uh, but I think you can pull it off year round. And from there, we're hopping over to Terre d'Hermes Eau Très Fraiche from Hermes. Now you could probably just go with Terre d'Hermes, the original Eau de Toilette here, and that would work as well. But I think in summer, like really high heat situations, I'd rather go with this one. It cleans up some of the earthiness, some of the dirtiness that you'll find in the original Terre d'Hermes, replaces it with kind of an aquatic feel. You have that citrus in here, a nice orange note, woods in the base, bit of geranium as well. Maintains a bit of that vetiver feel from the original Terre d'Hermes. And I think that you can pull this off in winter as well. Basically what it came down to is, would I rather wear Terre d'Hermes Eau Très Fraiche when it's very cold out, or would I rather wear the original Terre d'Hermes when it's very hot out? And I'd rather wear Eau Très Fraiche when it's very cold. A lot of times also, and I've spoken about this before, fragrances that do have a prominent citrus will smell great in the cold. It gives it kind of a frozen icy effect, almost really refreshing. Now I can't leave out Giorgio Armani, so we're gonna go with this one, Aqua de Jo Profumo. And with this one, it was basically, which Aqua de Jo do I think right now would work best across every season? I think it'd be this one. And that's because of the added incense in here. You know, like with Bleu de Chanel, like with Versace Dylan Blue, that incense lends a little bit of a smokiness and often that carries over very well into the cooler months. Now, of course, you're gonna have your Aqua de Jo DNA here. So you're gonna have those C notes, you're gonna have that citrus, you got a little bit of patchouli in here in the base as well. So during the warmer months, it's gonna work perfectly. And the original Aqua de Jo is still the best selling men's fragrance of all time. And since this does have a lot of that original Aqua de Jo DNA in it, you don't really have to worry too much about mass appeal here. Just about everybody's gonna love it. From there, we're going to a fragrance that is quite a bit cheaper from discounters, it's Coach for Men. Now, one of the more interesting notes here that you don't see used very often in men's fragrances is pear, more specifically a nashi pear. You also got bergamot in here, uh, cardamom, ambergris, and suede. This is a very fresh fragrance, a little bit sweet, kind of like an out of the shower type scent that you would just grab and spray on. And it does have actually kind of a shower gel appeal to it, you know, like a very clean, masculine shower gel. Presentation on this is very nice. And uh, as I said before, they don't cost all that much from discounters. So this is a great choice if you're just looking for something that you can have as like a, like I said earlier, a jack of all trades kind of scent, but you don't want to spend all that much money. You want that versatility. You want that compliment factor. You don't want to spend 80 bucks. It also smells a little bit similar to Jimmy Choo for men, which is also typically affordable from discounters. But I would say between the two, if I could choose just one, it would be this one. Performance is a little better from the coach as compared to the Jimmy Choo. And overall, the quality seems to be just ever so slightly higher. Jimmy Choo though, also a good option if you're looking for a cheap, versatile type scent. Now we're gonna go to a fragrance that didn't get too much love. It's from Burberry and it's Burberry Hero. Well, this came out last year. Presentation is really simple on it, but they do give you a nice magnetic cap. This one has bergamot, juniper, pepper, and cedar. And if memory serves correctly, I think it's like three different types of cedar. It's a lot of cedar. So this one ends up being more fresh, spicy, woody. Yeah, it's got that bit of citrus in the top, but it's not a whole lot and it's not the focal point here. The idea behind this fragrance is a little bit similar to the idea behind Dior Homme 2020, which is that bit of fresh spiciness in the top that leads you into ultimately a very woodsy fragrance overall. 
And while Burberry Hero doesn't maybe smell like the most complex thing on earth, it's actually very pleasant, easy to wear. And this one works really well year round because it kind of rides the path down the middle. Not too dark, not too heavy, but also not based you know, solely on citrus and, and very fleeting and light. It's the type of fragrance that I would expect more people to come around to as time goes on because it didn't really set the world on fire when it first came out. But the more you wear it, the more you respect it for what it is. Nice masculine woody scent that's gonna work anywhere. And last up, another newer one, Prada Lunarosa Ocean. Bergamot, lavender, iris, and musk. Some of the notes in the fragrance. And of course, this being Prada, they had to work iris in there. And this is another one that people were kind of iffy on. When it first came out, it didn't get a huge amount of love, but it's actually very, very good. It's Prada's blue scent. It's made to go up against Dior Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, and all the other ones we talked about here. That little faint hint of iris around the edges gives it this additional touch of soapiness, but it doesn't go over toward the powdery side of things. Works beautifully together with the musk and the lavender, giving you this masculine but clean and fresh scent that's got good staying power and good projection. Lunarosa Ocean is maybe a little bit overlooked even, because as far as likability goes, it can compete with a lot of those higher end blue scents. Lunarosa Ocean, fantastic fragrance, love it for spring and summer, but it has enough oomph to last in the cold as well. So there we go guys, 10 any season, all year fragrances. Yeah, heavy on the blue scents, but that's what they're made for. As always guys, thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. Thank you.